everyone, I'm Count Zero, and I just got back from seeing Final Fantasy Distant Worlds live at the um, Arlington Center Concert Hall in Portland, part of the 30th anniversary for Final Fantasy Tour and the 10th anniversary tour for the series in general. Apologies if my... But... Oh, no, there, there's nothing I can do, I just look... I just look really white in this light because it's because I'm recording at night, and that rhymes. So anyway, I just got back from the concert. Uh, gonna get my thoughts on this re reasonably quick. So, concerts, as the concert goes, I've been now to like four video game orchestral concert performances. I've been to the Live it wasn't play a video game symphony, but one like it. Um, I've been to Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses, and now this. So I've got a kind of good grasp of the spectrum of the video game. Oh, and uh, Final Fantasy New World, which is their chamber music performance, which fits more in the uh, just orchestral side of things. I'll give you the spectrum here. So on the one end. You have video games live, which is a rock concert with a symphony. It's not just multimedia stuff with gameplay footage projected on screen, or incorporating electric guitar and other rock instruments in performance. We have cosplayers running on stage. Not co not cosplayer, but look, or hire a hired cosplayer. Cosplayers being on stage for various segments. We have, um, not to say pyro, but you have steam or smoke jets or that sort of thing, and you have laser lights and that sort of stuff. It's the, it, 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 there's an orchestra present, but the ambiance is the exact antithesis of what you would get going to see the symphony perform. On the other side of the coin, we have. Stuff like Final Fantasy New World, which is strictly an orchestral performance, orchestral or symphonic or chamber music performance, where it's just the instrument playing music from video games, but it's not like they're. We don't have a, any video screens or anything that gameplay footage, and we're having a more button down tone, even if you're not, it's not formal dress. As far as for what the audience is expected to wear, it's a more serious tone. It's not as boisterous as video games live. And in the middle, you have stuff like W the Goddesses and this, where it's the symphony performing, and they're performing they have orchestral arrangements without any additions of electric guitar or synth. Or that um, You do have a projector, you have a screen on the stage, providing context of of gameplay footage or cutscenes or that sort of thing, or is a Final Fantasy film footage as well, putting the music in a sort of context within the game. And that's what Distant Worlds is in terms of the structure of the content. <clears throat> Now, Symphony of the Goddesses is structured very much as kind of a symphony. They're trying to have a, to put it away. It, it's like a album structure kind of thing, where you're having different pieces of music thematically and tonally feeding into each other. Whether it's building a narrative of the Legend of Zelda timeline or the mythology of Legend of Zelda or various other things, thematic elements of the, that recur within the series or just emotional context. Whereas Distant Worlds feel like, at least with this performance, they were played at Portland once before, but I did not get the chance to see the concert. Um, Distant Worlds feels more thematically, at least this performance, kind of like rock band coming to down, playing a mix of their new stuff and their old stuff. It's not, obviously, again, we're not doing the rock band thematic style, where laser lights, the guitar, that sort of um, folk, 
that sort of thing. But it is an instance of where there are structural, there's certainly structural decisions in work made in setting up the, the, the playlist for the concert, or set list rather for the concert, that sort of thing. And the emotional highs and lows and that sort of stuff. But it's not, it's clearly not, we don't have that structure of this is a symphony. We have um, Arnie Roth, the conductor, doing stage banter with the audience and that sort of thing. It, it's much more audience back and forth engagement. And, and that's fine. It's, it's, Nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I, this is a, it's a video game concert, and also it's a 30th anniversary, not just 30th, it's an anniversary concert series. And anniversary concerts, concerts, tonally always have a different feeling to them. It's a celebration, there's a, it's a party, we're kind of, a, we're not going to be all, we're not as uptight as we would normally, being as we've done something really cool. We've done this video game concert, or they've done this video game concert series for 10 years. The Final Fantasy series has existed for 30 years, which is two years, well, three years older than I've been around. Well, three years younger than me. Old. Um, but the point is, it's been around for... 30 years, the Final Fantasy series, so there is the sense of, well, of, of celebration, and that works for this concert series, particularly this, this one, where you don't, I don't feel the need, or didn't feel the need for them to, we're going to play this straight, we're just going to do straight set leading up to intermission, then straight set coming out of intermission with not much audience conversation or that sort of thing. And as far as the set list goes, it's a very good mix of music from across the full range of the Final Fantasy series. 1 to 15. In fact, we, we had two tracks from 15. We had uh, three, two or three tracks from 7... Tracks from nine, um, two from eight. Not Libra. We didn't get Libra Fatale, but we did get Man with the Machine Gun. Uh, we got oh, seven, of course. One Winged Angel. Um, that's probably the closest we get to any audience participation rock concert stuff because we're prompting the audience to sing along on the Sephiroths. Um, or they're, they're probably going to sing along with Sephiroth's. We had, we had Final Fantasy 3, like a straight up standalone Final Fantasy 3 track. We had bits and pieces of Final Fantasy 3 other ones, but, like in a couple of the medleys, but we here we had a designated, this is a Final Fantasy 3, 3 any, 3 Japan, not 3 US track. Plus we had like a character medley for 6, the opera, which was, I kind of wanted the opera. I picked up the CD, the first CD to have the opera on it, but it's one thing to listen to it. It's something else to see it performed. Um, we had we had five. Um, again, incorporated the medley. Five was used in battle medley. Battle theme medley where we had Battle on the Big Bridge, you had the Final Fantasy VII theme. Um, battle theme, at least those fight further, I believe the title. Uh, and we had the four battle theme. Don't believe we had the one battle theme. No. We didn't have, let's see, your choral stuff goes, but we, we had the, um, as was common with Final Fantasy Disney Worlds, apparently, and actually something you have to have if you're doing One Winged Angel with a full orchestra and stuff. If you're going to do it justice and put the full power behind it, 
we have uh you have to have the require in this case it's the uh Portland State University Chamber Choir. Is it Portland State University or the University of Portland? I'll be two universities in the same. Uh, so, we have a chamber choir present from one of the universities. Let's put it that way. Program. So, we have. Um, other than that, as far as for other big standard tracks, and Final Fantasy V tracks, and those are new for this tour, and I believe I heard mention this was the first time that we'd be getting at least one of these Final Fantasy V tracks in the U.S. Um, we did get a new one on one of the Final Fantasy VII tracks. It's not clear if this was debuting at this show or just, de or just debuting on this tour. At Genova Complete, which was nice. Well, this did this did lead like this and um, four fiends, uh, did from Final Fantasy IV did lead to one of my like my one minor complaint. It's a very very minor. When you're doing video packages for a show like this, this is own speaking as a person who does editing, I'm not at the super professional level with these guys, are, but I do editing. It is clear that the reason the footage also I do tech I've done technical right. There's got that in my background as well. It's clear from a presentational standpoint. The footage that goes with the music is there to provide context with to go with the music. As far as narrative context in terms of boss fight. Maybe what was leading up to this, what's led up to this boss fight immediately. That sort of thing. Particularly with some of the more flashy, with later games where you have really flashy effects during boss fights and that. And this comes up a little bit with Four Fiends, but more so when we did, when they did uh, the Great Hunt Festival from Final Fantasy. Uh, nine. The four fiends we had. They basically used as a present as the thematic focus of the video package for that was the boss fights of Final Fantasy IV. Uh, not just the four fiends, so they are shown, and the art by Uchitaka Amano, the concept art for the characters, the illustrations are also shown. Great. If the other little complaint I have is I would actually having a little more Nubo or Nubo or Amat, not Nubo Amatu, I mean, Shitaka Amano art would absolutely benefit this in a certain respect because Amano's amazing and displaying some of his art and showing off some of his art would be great. So, and yeah, there's that. Uh, we have uh, with the Hunt Festival in nine. We have like we start off showing like narrative, like early narrative beats, not the full nine yards with dialogue on screen text and that sort of thing, but beats for um the theater ship comes to. Dendria at the start of nine, they end up on actually not even that we we skip past that to we saw actually saw that bit in a different track earlier in the concert. Then we get to leadership crashes. You end up at um our protagonists end up being chased by one of the black waltzes, um, and they show them arriving in Lindwall, and then we skip way ahead. In this, basically, like disc two or three, just some stuff from disc two and some stuff from disc three, Final Fantasy IX, and skip over the actual portion of the game that this is from, which is the Great Hunt, where the whole thing is you are parts of the town are locked off, monsters are unleashed in the city, in this closed off area, and 
teams of characters go out to fight the monsters. They get points for the monsters they beat, and there's some scripted, time-based vignettes that happen in there at certain points in time, um, based on how and we have how other characters are doing related to that. And what I was hoping we'd get is we'd kind of is as we played this piece of music, which is narratively, which is the music piece of music itself is shorter than the actual sequence. It loops when you play this part of the game. So what I thought we were going to get when they announced, when Final Fantasy said, all right, and we're playing uh, our next pe uh, group of pieces, like this piece, this piece, and the Hut Festival from Final Fantasy IX. I'm like, ah, great. Because this is a one piece of music, but it's a one narrative event, which kind of stands alone contextually on its own within the game. Like, okay, so we're going to edit a little package together to go with this of the Hunt Festival, of the party splitting into its relevant chunks. I believe it's Vivi and Steiner is one of the team. You have uh, Dagger and Sedan, your team, of course, Sedan, because you're the protagonist. Maybe it wasn't Dagger, it was someone else. So, your party member at this point is basically. Uh, Dagger, uh, Zidon, Steiner, Vivi. I don't think we've gotten any of their two major characters yet. The only think we've gotten are Dragoon and uh, Finia yet. So, anyway. You've got your teams together, you're running around, you're fighting monsters, and at certain points... Other monsters come up, like the big monster comes out and this leads to the big boss fight. And what I was hoping we'd get is like we'd get is that you can edit around the random encounters. You don't need to show those, but like show it fighting, like show the hunt beginning, show a little bit of one of the teams getting their fight in against a monster in the, the combat screen, and then have uh, cutscene sequences of other like, monsters attacking it, and then the big monster comes out and the boss fight. As this goes on, and then that wraps up. That was how I expected we'd do this. Like, I admit, I jumped to a conclusion where, okay, now it's this piece of music, here's what the video package is going to be, because that is my, based on my assumption, is what I would do. Is, when you have one narrative chunk of a game that's tied to a particular piece of music, you use that narrative chunk. Uh, so we didn't quite get that. We got a, something. They did something similar with Bombing Run, um, from Final Fantasy VII, where they didn't use that much of actual Bombing Run, but they still used a bunch of the footage of a chunk of the game. Though what they did, which I thought was nice, is they had is they use footage from Crisis Core and from the remake, including some stuff which I don't recall having seen. Though it may have already been released already, just I hadn't gotten around to watching it yet. With um, in the Crisis Core cutscene footage is Zack attacking uh, a group of guards or bad guys or whatever on a train, sitting in the Midgar in approximately the same area where the bombing run portion of Final Fantasy VII is, which then leads into the remake footage from Bombing Run, with, um, we don't see the whole thing, but we see the team hacking through past doors, you see uh, Cloud navigating through chunks of dungeon, we don't see the fight against the uh, Scorpion robot in its entirety, or by any means, but we do see, like, the Scorpion robot shows up, Robot shows up and the tail comes up, and it's clearly it's a lead into that fight, but we don't skip we skip over that. Fine. That's up the this fight was there and it happened, and that was a chat and that was a challenge our, our heroes had to overcome, and wrapped up at Cloud leaping over onto the train, which ends the sequence that particular sequence. <clears throat> so again, I thought something like that. Where 
if you were if if you were a person in the audience who hadn't played Final Fantasy VII, or you're a person in particular if you're a person in the audience who you go see lots of co orchestral performances and you saw this uh, Final Fantasy Distant Worlds in your program and you decided to go see this with your kid or grandkid or just on your own because it's something weird and different and neat and you want to go see this at the symphony because you enjoy the symphony and want to support the orchestra. Having that narrative context works for giving you, okay, what is this music accompanying? And because none of these pieces of music exist in a vacuum. Video game music never exists in a vacuum. That's part of the reason why we build such emotional context to it, because we are in the, in the larger piece of this game, and we recognize it, and we don't just form a connection to it because of a scene of a movie or something like, something like that that we mentally draw our attention to, though certainly some of the great pieces of Final Fantasy music are tied to passive cutscenes, like Aerith's uh, funeral. But there also, there is a active and participatory access um, relevance to it because of how they exist in the games, whether it's video game music where it's uh, the Metal Man stage and Mega Man. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, all this is video game, but uh, platforming or story genres where it's Metal Man stage and Mega Man, or it's in... Metal Gear Solid, the music that plays during the boss fight, with, during one of the boss fights in the game. It's when you connect it to something active and participatory, it draws a different mental connection. And if for presenting it in a game, in a uh, concert context, if people haven't had a chance to have that connection, it's important to have a video or visual, visual accompaniment to provide that connection. This is why you get the screen videos and that sort of shows like this. Tiffany of the Goddesses. And if those videos miss the mark for providing that context necessarily, then that doesn't quite work. But to get back to what they actually show in this sequence, um, instead of showing the hunt sequence of the game, have the lead into the arrival at Lindblom, and then we skip past that to two and two, two and three, when Uja has joined forces with Queen Braun, and she's unleashing summons and destroying cities and that sort of thing, which doesn't mesh with the music because the music is festive and it's exciting and energetic, but also still festive. There's a degree of lightheartedness in there because. This is for the festival. This is for the festival of the hunt, and we're doing this for fun, not for a life and death situation. I mean, yes, there's a risk for taking part in this, but it's not a life and death, you're going to die. Um, the lives of millions of people are on the line situation. That sort of thing. So, that complaint out of the way. That, that my main primary complaint with, with, editing of some of the video packages. And that's, again, a small... And it's, on, it's only really something I noticed because these are games I've played a bunch of, and Final Fantasy IX particular. Of the numbered games in the series, like in my top three, if not my number one. So, and that's one of my favorite parts of the game, so that sticks out in my mind. When, and that was that. That's the track which I'm super. Which when they said it, I was legitimately super pumped more than I was for even other games that I've played and um and themes that I've liked, but which are featured as part of a medley or that sort of thing. Like I love I love Seven a lot. I like I, I enjoy a bunch of Eight, and I like the Man with the Machine Gun as a piece of music, but as a Overall, whole the festival of the hunt is the part is gameplay part, musical part of nine that I like a lot. So, if Final Fantasy Distant Worlds returns to Portland, will I go see it? 
Absolutely, yes. And indeed, I would recommend you do so as well. Um, when I went to see this concert, it was on my birthday, so I got myself a nicer seat as a birthday present to myself in the lower mezzanine. I would say one complaint about the venue is... I admit, I got my... The reason I picked the lower mezzanine is because it was more affordable, is, well, it was more expensive than the nosebleed section. Closer... And also, I had the impression that maybe there might be a little more legroom seats. I was wrong. So, keep that into consideration. If you are a tall person or a person with long legs, and you are seeing a, a particular person with long legs and maybe also restless leg syndrome as well, and you're seeing a performance at Arlene Stitcher Concert Hall for the first time, Maybe shoot for an aisle seat if you can't afford. So anyway, with that out of the way, if you have seen Final Fantasy Distant Worlds and enjoyed it or didn't, please post your thoughts below. Um, several of the albums for Final Fantasy Distant World have, well, there, there are several albums. They're on album four. And so I will put links below in the show notes as well. If you want to listen to music for Distant Worlds, and they haven't come to your chunk of the world or chunk of the of your of the United States or Canada yet. That's a way you can go to pick up the music and enjoy it that way. Though you won't get the larger show and visual performance and appearance that goes with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and please click the notification button to be notified whenever new episodes of the show go live. If you really like the show, please consider backing my Patreon at patreon.com slash count0or. Backers can view episodes up to one week early, and also pick future games for Let's Plays. Thank you for watching.